independence that she needs from you. So we don't support each other, and we don't support her in this process. How is she going to take the word back to rank and file? It's broke out. That's what takes it back. The mayor doesn't take it back. The CAO doesn't take it back. Step in that. And I think we need to acknowledge her presence. And she's brave to be here. Oh, so can trust her. I can trust her. She's a lower. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I missed the West Side community meeting that they have, and that's the part of the town that I live in and I was born and raised in. Um, this is my community as well, not just as patrolling an officer. This is a, a newly elected position for me that I've been in in the past year, and it's not to spy for the rank and file or the police or to collect to take back information. It's to learn how to build a better relationship with the community because if I'm not hearing from the community what itself is the problem is, uh, and I know it's hard for officers to hear because it does seem at times, um, especially when we're in city council, that it, there's so much anger and frustration on the community's part. Um, the officers have that same anger and frustration too, just for different, from a different point, and it, it doesn't get relayed necessarily. Um, you know, talking to the city councilors, um, I'm in communication with them a lot of, at times as well, and I think what people don't understand is that our um, city administration is not the same as our department administration, and the department administration technically doesn't always trickle down to the rank and file on the street. Um, police officers have a job to do, they do the job that they're told to do, um, and a lot of times that chain is broken with communication as it was with the community. And um, me being in the position that I'm in now, I want to find a better way to fix it. You know, I, I, I speak to Canales when I come in, and the other people that have lost a family member to somebody who was killed by a police officer. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate that they lost a loved one, and I try to picture myself as that sister, as that mother, as that daughter, um, and how they might be feeling to have lost somebody, any family member, or just anybody that you know. Um, I'm a military veteran myself, um, and I think back to how people portray this as a paramilitary department, and it's similar to one, but not even necessarily close, because I, I've been overseas, and I, like I said, it, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult in the military than I agree with you. It comes from a higher portion. It's not just from the, the department itself, it's from the administration, it's from the, the state, and it's from the government that we have ourselves, because the same thing, I, I had a reporter ask me today is, you know, when there was postings on Facebook, um, police officers and government employees don't have the opportunity to have the same freedom of speech as your average citizen. And I think that's what makes it difficult for them, is that they do find ways to vent their frustrations um, and do it anonymously. And that's the unfortunate part, is that you don't have the ability to walk, walk up to an officer and ask how they feel about something, because they don't have that opportunity. Our standard operating procedure prohibits them from being able to speak to you on what they actually think or how they actually feel, um, because it doesn't allow them to without them facing some sort of discipline for it. So when you have an officer not giving you a comment or not wanting to speak to you about something, it's not because they just, they're just they being rude or that they just don't want to talk to you or it's, it's a blue wall of silence. It's not necessarily that. It's, it's the fact that they do not have that opportunity. Um, I'm in a different position now, being in an elected position now from my rank and file, and I'm who they choose to speak on their behalf. So like I said, I don't want to just be here to speak on their behalf. I want to hear your concerns. Like, um, as Bautista said, so I can take it back to them and I can find a way to work with my city councilors and the mayor and the city administration and the department administration to say, hey, here's what their concerns were. I was there, I heard it. These are individuals I heard it from. I try to attend as many city council meetings as I can. I try to be everywhere that I can possibly be, um, which is very, very difficult because there's not enough of me to be everywhere where I need to be. But I do want you guys to know that um, we are very, very concerned. And like I told the reporter that was asking me today, the police officers that you have here are here because they truly want to be here and they want to make the community better and they want to protect and serve their community. Um, they're not here because they have to be here because there's law enforcement hurting everywhere. And that's what I say is that, you know, with the way it's hurting in our state, um, there's the ability to go to any other department because every department is short. I just came back from a training that was very beneficial to me because I got to meet with other agencies from around the nation, from Australia and from Canada, and the sad part about it is when you're looking around our entire nation is that law enforcement is hurting in every facet you can imagine with a shortage of officers. And I think what's hard now is that we just don't have a generation that wants to be civil servants anymore, um, even in, in high schools. And you know, and I know there's a lot of teachers here, and that's great, you know, because I think our, our education is struggling as well. And um, when they're being educated, those that can graduate and make it through it is they're being taught a different thing. You don't see trade schools in high school no more. They're not going through electives of trade schools to be servants, you know, and to be 
um, blue collar workers. So there, there's lot locks and there's um, uh, interns in hospitals that they're teaching them to be better edu educated, which is great. But in the same sense, it's depleting. It's depleting your your civil service. Um, the, the one thing, uh, yes, yeah, I'm going to take a question for you. The one, I mean, anybody who wants to ask Stephanie a question. The one thing that I want to say that's really important is that <coughs> Mayor Barry got it. The APD budget, we had an, an uh, internal auditor talk to us yesterday. The money that was taken out was for training, DWI, and, and things that um, the officers might have needed, the pallet cameras and such. We know that uh, somehow another million dollars was put back in now that DOJ is here. The problem is this, we're still short 300 officers. So that means it's been budgeted. So we have to hold them accountable for where that money has been spent since officers have not been hired. So if you multiply 300 officers times whatever it is that they come in at, that's how much money was available in the budget that she could use. Should we really be hiring 300 officers at this present time? Yes. Well, what, what, yes. Uh, Mr. Aragon, let me tell you. Oh, he's on call number 30. Who has number 30? Do we have 30? What is, what is the what is union's stance on the rebel counter uh, enforcement? And I know uh, the union in the past has given six hundred dollars to police officers who um, fatally wounded people in the past. Uh, is there any type of sanction for the union for someone that doesn't follow the rebel counter um, or the or, or uh, standard operating procedure? The union doesn't have the, we don't have any say in the disciplinary process and how it is. There is a disciplinary process, and I want people to be aware of that. We support Not from a disciplinary yeah. I'm saying you guys have taken the, uh, you guys have taken the incentive to the past to reward them for something that you're not required to do. That's, that's not a reward. I know a lot of times, I, and that was obviously my predecessor was before I came into this, and the media portrays this as a bounty. It was never meant to be a bounty, or that's not what it was for, because as you can see, when the media ends up hitting an officer, um, I think people see it from one perspective and see what they want the media portray to portray to you. So it wasn't a bounty, it was for the ability for an officer to be able to get away from being in the limelight of the media and to have his face on there, and to have his family's face on there, or his history on there. For those that knew him, I mean, I can tell you, and, and it's, it's, it shouldn't be about us and them, we do support the health I mean, we think that they need to be there for accountability, um, there's, there's not a problem with it. It's how that they're being used. I mean, because personally, I don't think that they should be run the entire shift. Because we are human at the same time, too. I mean, because if you're going to do that, why not just put a lapel camera on every building and on every street light and not have officers and save that much more money? I mean, this um, last, this 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 last,